It's sexist by his standards. People are so much more than sexual identity, but that's all they're talking about. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Anything else in between is of who? That many men and women can promise many things. The witchcraft can promise you many things. The Jehovah's Witnesses can promise you many things. Religion can promise you many things. Politicians can promise you many things. Your family, your friends can promise you many things. You can promise yourself many things. But the Word of God says this, that the promises of God are yes and that amen. Take the stairs, then in 20 yards, arrive at your destination. What's going on guys, I hope you're well. So we have come down here to Darlington. It's an hour away from Newcastle. And as you can see, um, there's quite a lot of people here. Just over there, we have a huge witchcraft stall. We have the Jehovah's Witnesses down there. And you know, I really want to just communicate the heart behind this. We come down to these different places and we look people dead in the eye. And we realize that these are people, creations who God loves, but they do not yet love him because they do not know him. The Bible tells us how can they know him if a preacher does not preach? And how can a preacher preach if a preacher has not sent? So the Lord has sent us down here to proclaim the good news of the gospel. And we do it with a burden um, a burning passion and a tear in our eyes for those who do not know him. The gospel is the power of God of, to salvation to all who will believe and we pray that they will believe and we also pray that you guys would be encouraged, be stirred up, be really set on fire for, the, for the, the message of the gospel. If you're a Christian you've been saved and you've been sent not necessary to street preach but to share Jesus. So we thank you um, to those who pray, to those who love us, to those who support this work and may the Lord be glorified, may Jesus save souls in this place and wherever me, the guys, and you lay your feet. So let's see what's going to happen here today in Dalton. God bless you. Well, he doesn't have to. He could make us be robots, couldn't he? He could just control us. But he, okay, but he, but he doesn't control us. So you've got free choice. You've got free choice to get up in the morning and do whatever you do. Okay. Putin has free choice to get up and do, do whatever he does. Okay. But Putin will be judged for what he does, just like Hitler will be judged for what he does. But just like you and I will be judged for what we do. Boys, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? No. no. It is. Is it? What about you? Do you believe it? No. All fake. All nonsense. How do you know? You're atheist. So your life's built on something you don't believe in. Fuck your mum. We're in Dalton, not London. Road man. Anyway. <laughs> We've got road men down in Dalton. We've got them everywhere. And uh, praise the Lord for that. We praise the Lord for that because you know what it is, guys? The reason we come down here is to reach everybody. Everybody under the sound of my voice. The message goes to you. And the message is this, that it does not matter where you are, it does not matter who you claim to be, it does not matter what you do in dark rooms by yourself, it does not matter what people have told you, nothing, absolutely nothing, is hidden from the eyes of Lord God Almighty. He sees all things, it is a he, it is a he. It's sexist, by whose standards? Are you a male or a female? How do you know? Are you not being sexist in saying that? Huh? It's your choice. Come a little bit further forth, don't hear you. We're going to have a conversation. His. The Alpha and the Omega. So let's answer your question easy, right? God is a spirit, okay? You're not a spirit. I'm not a spirit. But God is a spirit. Well, he has because he says his attributes, the way he is, is like a father. But when Jesus Christ came down here, now we can get into the liberal politics and all that sort of stuff, but actually God just says what it is, because he, he made this, so he gets to say what this is. But with that said, uh, when Jesus Christ came down here, he was most certainly a man. And the Bible says that he, God showed himself in Jesus Christ. Jesus is white. The Hebrew Israelites down in Birmingham said he was black. Do you know what matters? Not who Jesus' skin colour not, it really doesn't matter because the saviour could be black, he could be white, he could be purple. But the saviour is who he says he is. And he says he's the way, the truth and the life. 
and that nobody comes to the Father except through him. And you know what else he says? He says he's your creator. That he knows the numbers of hairs on your head. Okay, so we're going from gender now to why does God allow bad things? Okay, I'll answer the question. But the reason that there's death, that there's suffering, that there's diseases, that there's children with cancer, which my brother just talked about in his own life, the reason for all of that is because of one thing. In the beginning, God created it was good. When God says it was good, he's not just talking about 7 out of 10, he's talking about perfect. We were with him without need. But then in comes the serpent. And the serpent gives humanity another option. The first lie in the Bible comes from the devil himself. And he says, surely God did not say that. Or surely God did not mean that. When he says you don't need to go eat from that tree. God gave us everything we need and he gave us boundaries and limitations. Yes? Boundaries and limitations which are good for us. Yeah? But what we did was we pushed them away and we went our own way. When we did that, our relationship with God went from being in perfection, in relationship with our Heavenly Father, too broken. And in rushed all darkness, all sickness, all sin, all depravity, whatever you want to talk about, the humanity fell. Have you heard about the fall? From perfection, from, from relationship with God. This says, on the other side, is what is your relationship status with God? And I can tell you now, that's broken. So, even if you do believe in it, you don't have a relationship with God? No. No. So, I'm going to say, so that is our, that's our condition before God. What's your name? Lewis. I'm Curtis. Lewis, our condition before God is broken. Our relationships are broken with God, okay? Now, the Bible says, because of that, we're guilty. We don't like talking about that, but we know that it's wrong to murder. We know it's wrong to lie. We know it's wrong to do all sorts of other stuff. We know that because God has given us a conscience. If that building's alarm went off, for whatever reason, burglar alarm or fire alarm, you would know that there's something wrong with it. What God has given us is a conscience. But what we try and do in humanity is to dumb that down. God doesn't exist. Let's make 4,200 plus other religions. God is this, God is that, God is Just like the gentleman here before. Well, the guys, they weren't really gentle. The guys here before. We do anything, we believe anything but the gospel. We believe anything but God because our rebellious heart, Genesis, is evident to all. But God isn't like that. God is good. God is faithful. God is love, just and righteous. However... His hand is extended to, to humanity because he does not make what he does not want. He wants a relationship with you. But what we've done is we've stuck our fingers up and gone the other way. So because of that, we are dead in our sins. Dead in our trespasses and transgressions. We cannot go there. But what did Jesus do for you? The Bible, I'm going to talk about Jesus and his gender and all that sort of stuff. Well, God came down on a rescue mission for your soul, for my soul, to make that relationship from here close again. Humanity was far away from him. And you know what we're doing on this world? You know what we're doing? Terrible things. Then we were saying it was good. You know the Bible says, in the last days, any days after the resurrection of Christ, there will be so many things that will say what is bad is good. And what is good is bad. We've seen it here today, right? And um, we justify what we want to do with being good. But what you want to do is sinful because your heart is deceitful above all else. But Jesus did something for you, mate. To make you right with God. The wages of sin is what? Death. So we, we deserve to die. God is just and righteous and holy. If you break the law on this side of eternity, you go to prison, you go to jail, you serve your time, right? If I was a 10 out of 10 perfect human, but you're not. I would all, I just live forever. You, not talk about life on this side because the body wears and dies, right? You're a young lad now, young, strap and lad. But my brother here, he's a bit longer in the tooth. Our body withers and dies. We're talking about something, you're talking your soul here, right? So, when we talk about 10 out of 10 perfect person, oh yeah, no. There, you said it, not me. Nobody's perfect apart from God. The Bible says it another way, right? It says all have fallen short of the glory of God. That means everybody's guilty, everybody's broken his law, everyone's deserving of that punishment I talked about, right? Yeah. What's the point of believing in him when you can't be perfect? Because he's not calling to be perfect. He's calling to himself. Because what Jesus did for you, mate, was something that you can't do for yourself. What Jesus did for you is something that they couldn't do for themselves. What Jesus did for me is what I couldn't do for myself, but what religion tells you to do for yourself. 
religion tells you to be better, to be 10 out of 10, or at least 6 out of 10, so you get to heaven. Listen, this isn't just about heaven. This is about relationship with your Creator. It's about relationship with God. So what Jesus did for you was he was 10 out of 10 perfect. He was sinless because he is God. Any other religion, any other way that says Jesus wasn't God and just a man, well, the sacrifice wouldn't be adequate because he would be a man. He can't keep the law. He, he, Jesus did it from the letter all the way to the cross. Jesus kept it. He was a perfect sacrifice. So when he laid his life down, this is what he did for you. I don't ever want this to sound little and small. Oh, Jesus died for me. Sins, I heard about that in school. No, listen. We are wretched and not good, right? You see it all over the place. People hate the message of the gospel. They hate it because they hate the truth, right? They hate it. And because why they, they don't want to hear it, it's because it exposes all of your dirt, right? It's like a UV light all over you and you see how wretched we are. Maybe to him and maybe to him and maybe to him, we're not that bad because we're human. But when you put it in reflection to God, who is holy, where no darkness dwells, where there is no evil, where he hates it, when he hates sin, because it's so opposed to him, like cat and dog, like light and dark, magnets repelled from it, then we can't claim how good we are. We can't claim that we are good because it's his standard, he says it, but then, the same God, who could pour out his wrath against us now, all the blasphemers, all the witchcraft, all the Satanism, all the paganism, all the false religions, all the hatred, all the darkness, all the sin. He could do that now for you, mate. But he didn't. Because you know where his wrath was poured out? At the cross, upon his one and only son. Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Have a guess. Because he liked to kill his son. Have a guess. It's personal between you and him. Why did he do it? Why did he intervene for you? Well, it doesn't matter if believe it because it happened. I'm just saying, why did he do it? And I'll tell you why, mate. Because he loves you. Because the Bible says so. Has it? By who? Millions of times. So, if we got the original manuscripts, it would say something completely different to what it says now answer the question if we got the originals and they'll be completely different to the ones we've got now 100 percent brother brother mate you've just got to do a little bit of research unbiased research jesus christ 2000 years ago can i ask you a question does it work doesn't work because what the gospel does, boys, is it's either for one or two things. It's either for your salvation, or it's either for your condemnation. See, it goes, there's two ways. There's not many ways. There's many ways that seem right to a man. But what we'll do is, is we'll see that, we'll say anything, we'll believe anything apart from Christ. See, Jesus said this was happened. It says, they will hate you because they first hated me. They will hate the messenger because they hate the message. But what I'm saying to you today, guys, is what's it going to be? Is it a hard heart or will the gospel pierce your heart with the good news of Jesus Christ? Because the message here, boys, is that all have fallen short of the glory of God are not a good. And the only one who is good is Jesus Christ. And he came down here, he got his feet dirty, he walked among the streets for those who were suffering, who were excommunicated, for those who the religious wanted nothing to do with. Oh, how filthy, how disgusting. Look at the state of you, you're not like me. But Jesus Christ looked at them in the eyes as he looks to you today and he says, if you only knew that my grace was sufficient for you. See, where sin abounds, darling, his grace abounds all the more. Amen. This is what the word says, so no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, if you're a young atheist who's trying to escape God by saying it's not true, or if you're here today broken and lost, whatever it is, Nothing's hidden from the eyes of God. But what he does say to you today is, come to him, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Amen. One thing we say all the time, right? You know when I came down to Dolo, you guys say something, you say it a lot. You say, I swear down. You, you do, don't you? People say, I swear down. All the time people say, yeah, I swear down. God bless you. 
That's what you guys say all the time. And what does it mean to swear down? It's the same as saying, honest to God. Just believe what I'm saying. When I say this, I really, really mean it. Dalton's a lovely place, I swear down. Oh, I didn't do it, I swear to God. Some people even go as far to say, on my kids' life, I never like that. But people say that all the time, don't they? What they're saying is, trust me. Trust me when I say, I swear to God, because I'm putting it on his name. You should believe what I'm saying because I'm putting it on his name. But what about this? How heavy is your word? And what I mean by that is, on what percentage can I rely upon your word? Do you keep every promise? Ladies, do you keep every promise? No. No. Guys, do you keep every promise? Now, why? Why don't you keep every promise? You're fallible because you're human, right? Yeah, you can't keep your promises because you're human. Even, even though you might have great intentions, you can't keep your promises. Have you ever had anybody not keep promises to you? Yeah, how did, how did it go down? Hurt your heart, innit? Doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good at all. Um, Jesus talked about that on the Sermon on the Mount, the most famous sermon ever. Jesus was sat upon the mountain and he ministered to many. And Jesus goes on about making promises because in the Bible, Jesus took issue with hypocrites, right? Pharisees were hypocrites, a religious type of hypocrites. They would walk around and say, I'm good, you're not good. They would say, at least I'm not like you. Have you seen the way your life's turned out, man? You're not like me. Some people do that, yeah, you know. We had guys before saying how bad Putin was, how bad Hitler was. Hey, I agree. I agree. But what we negate to do is look in the mirror and see what we do. So what we tend to do is run away when the preacher says that. But anyway, back to your word being your word. Jesus says to people, in a nutshell, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Anything else in between is of who? The devil, of the evil one. So let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. Anything else is of the devil. Strong words. So what he's saying is your word should be your word. Because if it's not your word, what is it? A lie. Oh. Ouch. And who's the father of lies in the Bible? Satan. Satan. So if you're not what... Don't jump. He's not the one we need to be afraid of. Satan. Yeah. Yeah. So let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Because if you're not doing that, you're a liar. Ouch. Do you know the Bible says that God hates lying lips? And do you know why God hates lying lips, guys? It's because he is the... Truth. Truth. Remember we talked about opposites before, Lewis. God is the truth. So therefore he hates lies. So what does that make? It makes us liars. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Anything else is of the devil. When we talked about truth before, people get triggered. Your truth is your truth. My truth is my truth. No. Jesus doesn't leave that open. He says he is the truth. So either he is or he isn't. Jesus can't be kind of true because a half-truth is a full lie. See, if I was walking down this street and you said just go straight, but I decided to go three degrees east, if I continued on that direction, I'd end up in the wrong direction. Jesus says the way to life is narrow. Not many find it. But the way to destruction is wide. And why I'm tying this to let your yes be yes and your no be no is because if you were to look all around us here today, over here we have witchcraft and Satanism. We've got Jehovah's Witnesses down here. We've had all sorts of other people preaching their messages here today. But is your life worthy of being built upon such things? Because guys, your life matters. You know it does. Some people didn't realise that before, but it does. And if you don't think your life matters... Your life is held together by the grace of God right now. You breathe in and you breathe out by the grace of God. You breathe in and even if you use your breath and your mouth to cuss him, the Lord is gracious and kind. Who can you trust in this life? Whose yes is truly yes and whose no is truly no? Politicians? No. Religious leaders? Sexual encounters? Your sexual identity that people talk about so much. People are so much more than sexual identity, but that's all they talk about. It's all they go on about. Do you not know 
that you're fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, but all you do is degrade yourself to a sexual identity? Heaven forbid that you would realize that the Lord has called you to so much more. And this is the depravity of man. We take what God has made in his own image and we drag it through the dirt and we give it to witchcraft, we give it to false religions, we give it to terrible relationships, we give it to debauchery, and then we wonder why God says, depart from me, I never knew you. But the word of God says, Dalton, if you would turn to him, girls, if you would turn to him, you would know the truth. And when you know the truth, it is the truth that will set you free. So guys, look, I appreciate that you've stopped in the tracks because listen, in this life, we will have troubles. We'll have pains, we'll have suffering, we'll have darkness. But Jesus goes on to say this, but take heart because it is him and him alone who has overcome the world. And he overcome the world at the cross because Jesus' yes was yes and his no was no. Because what if Jesus just changed his mind in the garden of Gethsemane when he cried out, Father, it is no other way. Is there no other way? But even if there's not, let your will be done and not mine. That's what he said. What if Jesus says, no, nah, I just don't fancy it anymore? Where would we be? We'd be without hope. We'd be completely lost. What's that, sister? Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And this is the truth. Because the shepherd went on a rescue mission for his sheep. And the word says his sheep will hear his voice. The sheep know his voice. Amen. See, guys, Jesus could have said at the garden, I'm not going tomorrow. But because his yes is yes, he was committed to his father's will. He picked up the cross. He picked up the cross. And he picked up the cross that belonged to you. And he picked up the cross that belonged to you. And he picked up the cross that belonged to you. And he picked up the cross that belonged to you, sir. And he walked through the marketplace where he was beaten, where he was flogged, where he was mocked, where he was spat on by the ones he gave the breath to do it. Very story. Very story. And you know what it is? The Bible says that the message of the cross, which I'm talking to you about now, is foolishness. It's nonsense to those who are headed to destruction. But Jesus endured for the joy set before him. So therefore, you can have a joy set before you. And Jesus walked and he went all the way to the cross. If this word is light to you, I pray by the movement of the Holy Spirit you have weight in it. Your sins are forgiven. You can be made brand new. Your relationship can be made close with him. You can be born again. Your stony hard heart can be given a new, responsive heart to the things of God. Look at the stony hearts of Darlington. Do not want to be made alive in Christ because we're dead in our sins and transgressions. But it is in Christ and Christ alone that you can be made alive. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not the spirit of rebellion and mockery and sin, but Holy Spirit. And what happens is he gets to work. See, behavior modification will never work. But what he does when you are his, he gets to work on his masterpiece. Sanctification. See, you have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Confirmed at the resurrection. And he gets to work where you have tried to make things a mess, he makes it a masterpiece because you will be born again, you will be made new. You will have a hope and an assurance in Christ and Christ alone. So that no matter what happens, ladies, on this side of eternity, if it's life, if it's death, if it's poverty, if it's riches, you got Jesus, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I want to tell you this before I get down that many men and women can promise many things. The witchcraft can promise you many things. The Jehovah's Witnesses can promise you many things. Religion can promise you many things. Politicians can promise you many things. Your family, your friends can promise you many things. You can promise yourself many things. But the Word of God says this, that the promises of God are yes and that amen. amen. Because God is not a man to lie. A heart for you, my brother's heart for you, is that you would know him. Tomorrow is not promised, but your eternity is. It's either heaven or it's hell. You either die in your sin or you die in Christ. You either die with a certainty of punishment for your sin or you die for a certainty 
in a paradise with your heavenly father. Darling, we say this to you today. If you hear the message of the gospel, maybe for the first time or the millionth time, don't harden your hearts. But come to Christ, and when you come to Christ, you're going to live.